Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, just some words of caution on this video. I respect all fighters who get in the ring, especially at this level, the championship level. These guys are warriors, right? Both men have been through trials and tribulations, have had to prove themselves over and over again before they reach the point of, in Adonis Stevenson's case, champion, in Tony Bellew's case, mandatory challenger, right? So just understand, I respect what these men have accomplished. It's a lot, right? They're at the top of the sport. This is championship level boxing. But this is also the tough neighborhood part of the internet. Here, I try not to pull the punch. Our goal is not to sell you cable subscriptions. My goal is simply to get an edge on the casino. Now yesterday you saw a well-produced fight, certainly here in the United States, HBO Boxing, right? Where they made you feel warm and fuzzy about Emmanuel Stewart's tutelship, tutelage of Adonis Stevenson. But how good of a Stewart disciple is Stevenson? Let's break it down by comparing him to one of Stewart's best accomplishments, Vladimir Klitschko. Now just understand that Stevenson's a southpaw and Klitschko is a righty. So what I want you to do is flip the two. When I mention right hand, you think left hand on the southpaw. Okay, now understand, if you're fighting Vladimir Klitschko, and keep in mind, Vladimir Klitschko is a great athlete, right? He's a great athlete. He's very well coordinated, right? Some of his fights have gone the distance, and Vladimir Klitschko, post Lehman Brewster, has shown stamina in the later rounds, right? Understand, too that Vladimir Klitschko isn't just technique, he's talent, right? You're talking about concussive power in both hands. But let's talk about what it's like to fight Vladimir Klitschko. And I'm just a layman. Full disclosure, I've never been in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko. I'm not a boxer, right? I'm just a guy who has bet on my share of boxing fights. So I'm in the ring against Vladimir Klitschko. Understand there is a great jab that I've got to deal with, right? Whatever Klitschko's power, and it's prodigious, right? However hard Klitschko hits in either hand, and he can knock you out with either hand. Understand before I get in his area code, I have to get by an excellent jab. If I don't do that, I lose the fight by several rounds, right? I don't have the luxury of having slow rounds, low volume rounds, because while I'm low volume, he's pumping a jab, he's picking up points. So understand, Vladimir Klitschko can beat you by points without throwing a great right hand. Right? He can literally take you out. Right? Without ever having to hit you hard. That's the hallmark of an elite Emmanuel Stewart fighter. What I want you to do is to look at old Thomas Hearns tapes. Right? The hitman actually had a great jab and length. Right? There's a length dynamic to 
Vladimir Klitschko, and Thomas Hearns. Right? These guys, it's not just a side profile setting up a dominant hand. These guys are blinding you with a jab. Right? If you can't dodge the jab, you lose. Not only that, the jab, just what I said, blinds you. So one minute you're looking at this. The next minute, here's the Sunday surprise, the Sunday punch. Let's talk more about Vladimir Klitschko. Let's say I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Let's say I'm ready for the jab. I'm playing a distance game. I'm outside on Vladimir Klitschko. His jab's falling short. When I come inside, I'm doing quick ducking moves, or I'm ready to knock down the jab to deal with the jab. Let's say I'm also looking at the right hand, because I understand if Vladimir Klitschko hits me with a solid overhand right, I'm going to end up like Calvin Brock. I'm going to end up like Tony Thompson. I'm going to look like I've been hit not with a right hand. I'm going to look like I've been hit by a car. Right? So let's say I have all that figured out. Let's say I'm Ray Austin. And I'm steering at Vladimir Klitschko's right hand. He's not going to end the show with the right hand. You know what? Vladimir Klitschko has a lead left hook. Right? I can't focus on the right, his dominant hand, because that lead left hook can knock me out. If you roll back the tape, and if you look at two fights, the Ray Austin fight, Vladimir Klitschko doesn't even use his right hand. He's jabbing Ray Austin. Ray's a big man like Vladimir Klitschko. Then he decides to close the show with left hooks. I'll give you another fight. Eddie Chambers. Chambers is a technician. There he is just moments away, literally just moments away from surviving 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko. He spent the fight looking at Vladimir Klitschko's right hand. And what does Vladimir Klitschko do? From halfway across the ring, Vladimir Klitschko sets up a lead left hook. The punch hits Chambers so flush that Chambers is unconscious before he hits the canvas. Right now, that's the dynamic. Before I get to the right hand, on an elite Emmanuel Stewart fighter, I have to deal with a great jab. I have to deal with a left hook. Right? Vladimir, excuse me, Emmanuel Stewart's elite fighters are two-handed. And the problems are big problems, right? Because, of course, that left hook can take me out. Understand, back in the Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns fight, the first one, one of the greatest fights, in my opinion, I've seen. After Ray Leonard hurts Thomas Hearns to the ribcage, and after Hearns is badly hurt, and has to go to plan B in the middle of the fight. And keep in mind, this is the guy who had destroyed Pimpino Cuevas in two rounds. right? Until this point, what we knew of Thomas Hearns was he was a knockout puncher. Hearns then gets on his horse. Think about it. This is one of the premier knockout punchers of that era. He's, he gets on his horse. And he works behind a jab. And that jab is so good that this is the fight where Angelo Dundee got so tired of seeing his fighter, a great boxer, his fighter, getting schooled by a slugger up on his toes, that Dundee says to Ray Leonard, and everyone hears at ringside, he says, you're blowing it, kid. Right? Because Ray Leonard, Mr. Upper Body, was repeatedly getting hit with a laser-like jab, right? That's Emmanuel Stewart at the highest level. Now let's talk about light heavyweight champion, Adonis Stevenson. As you watch the Tony Bellew fight, 
and I believe even members of Tony Bellew's family will concede that Tony doesn't have upper body movement like Sugar Ray Leonard, right? As you watch the fight, keeping in mind that Tony Bellew's 6'3", in other words, there's a lot of upper body to hide, right? He's 6'3 at 175. Just ask yourself, where is the Adonis Stevenson right jab? Keep in mind, Stevenson's a lefty. Where is the Vladimir Klitschko Thomas Hearns level jab? That Bellew has to dodge and deal with on the way in. Where is it? Let me go one step further. Where is the Adonis Stevenson right hook? the equivalent of Vladimir Klitschko's left hook. Where's the upfront power from Stevenson? When the fighters are far apart. I would say it's missing. What Stevenson has is what Manny Pacquiao has from distance. Those two guys are, in my opinion, remarkably similar. Again, styles make fights. Stevenson can throw a left hand, and it's straight. It's a straight left hand from way downtown. And he has spectacular power. Just like, excuse me, just like Manny Pacquiao has power in his left. Right? Both guys are heavy punchers. But understand, unlike Vladimir Klitschko, where I'm thinking about other things, Right? I can't focus on Vladimir Klitschko's straight right hand, and it's devastating because I'm dealing with one of the sport's best jabs. I'm dealing with one of the sport's best left hooks. Right, By the way, it's the same with Floyd Mayweather. I'm dealing with one of the sport's best left hooks. Let me go one step further. It was the same with Roy Jones. Right? Forget Roy Jones's great right hand. You'd have to deal with one of the sport's best left hooks on the front end. With Jones, you also had to deal with a guy who could throw uppercuts with either hand. Look at the Vinnie Paz tape. With Adonis Stevenson, I'm not dealing with any of that. I'm just dealing with a straight left hand from downtown. Let me go one step further. To me, up close, Stevenson didn't look that good. There are times in this fight where Tony Bellew lands some pretty good shots on Stevenson. Now it's interesting because Bellew, before the fight, was saying that Stevenson was more Pernell Whitaker than some come-forward slugger. Right Now, let me just say, as someone who believes that Whitaker is one of the best fighters he's ever seen, right? certainly defensively, I'm not sure if Whitaker has any peers. He's a great defensive fighter. Right? I'm at a loss. And I mean a complete loss to see too many analogies, too many similarities between Adonis Stevenson, who, in my opinion, has problems defensively, and Pernell Whitaker, who could go through a fight without getting hit. Right? Here, the point I want to make is simply that when Bellew takes a step forward, Right, and keep in mind, Bellew's fighting on his back foot for much of the fight. When he takes a step forward, and when he tries to counter Stevenson with that right hand, he had success. Right, what Bellew should have thought about is, and I know it's counterintuitive because of the punching power, but he should have thought about smothering Stevenson. Right, Stevenson has a long left hand. It's straight. 
That's it. Right? That's it. I know they're going to say, oh, Emmanuel Stewart helped him with his balance and stuff like that. He's not Vladimir Klitschko. Right? You're not dealing with a bunch of other stuff. You're dealing with a straight left hand. What happens if you were to back up Stevenson? Force him to throw that straight left off his back foot while dealing with your offense. Right? I think Stevenson's beatable. I wasn't that impressed by Stevenson. I'll concede, and I know people here online think I never want to fight stop. Quite the opposite is true. This was an excellent stoppage by the referee. I think this referee prolonged Bellew's career. But the problem I have with Stevenson, and he's 36, he's not going to learn that many new tricks, is that his right hand is underdeveloped. There are going to be some slow rounds that a guy who knows how to use a jab and then quickly move inside can exploit. Stevenson drops his hands. Understand the difference between Stevenson and, let's say, Roy Jones or David Hay, right? Those guys will drop the lead hand, so the lead hand is dangling by their waist. But make no mistake, with both Jones and Hay, right, guys who have that hand dangling, that lead hand has power. In other words, Jones could take you out with a left hook. Right? David Hayes actually two-handed. So while he has, and let me say this too, both of these guys had, have or had blinding hand speed. I understand both. Well, at least David Hayes retired right now. I'm not sure what Roy's status is. I think Roy's planning on getting back in the ring. But in their primes, these guys had hand speed. So that limp lead hand's a trap. I see it. I say, oh, Roy's not going to hit me with that left hand. Then as I try to dive in, suddenly I'm getting hit like James Tony got hit by Roy with that left hand. When I see Adonis Stevenson dangling that lead hand, I don't think he has a punch in that lead hand. It's not a threat. It's a bluff, right? He strikes me as just a straight left a straight left it's devastating right it's like the pitcher with a 100 mile an hour fastball it's devastating but just understand in baseball when all you have is a 100 mile an hour fastball that makes you a relief pitcher not a starter because sooner or later by the fourth inning or so Skilled hitters are going to figure out how to hit that pitch. To be a pitcher, you need more. Adonis Stevenson fought four times, has knocked out four people. But I believe if he fights someone cerebral, Hopkins, Kovalev, Ward, DeGale, He's going to have problems. So view me as an Adonis Stevenson skeptic. Hey, I'm a big fan of Emmanuel Stewart, as many people know here. Quite frankly, I thought Emmanuel Stewart was one of the best boxing analysts in the booth I've heard. Right? But just understand, Stevenson isn't Vladimir Klitschko or Thomas Hearns. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at Gamblers Advisory and DwyerSportsBetting.com. Thanks for stopping by.